Hey everyone, I'm Shelly and welcome to Liz Dola, Louisville Independent School District's outdoor learning area. Today we're checking out our watershed model and we're all about being water wise here for our community. Let's take a look at some of our features. First of all, before we turn the model on, we have to recognize that all of our water in this model is coming from rain catchment tanks from the roof. Great way to recycle water even in your own backyard. So as we turn on our model today, let's talk about what a watershed is. Well, as you can see on our model, we have areas of high elevation and we have areas of low elevation. And then through our model, even through downtown, we can see that not all of our landscape is flat. So a watershed is simply how water flows or moves, how it's shed through the contours of the landscape. When we have high elevations and low elevations, we make different areas where water will pool and move throughout the landscape. So let's take a look at how that's happening up here in the mountains. We've got like maybe some snowpack melting or a glacier. So in the spring and summer when all of that is running off, runoff is how water moves on the surface and pools together here in a river to make our lake. Let's check out some other areas of runoff. Come on over here with me to our campground. So on our model, I'll challenge you to remember that you're really tiny if you're a human in this model. So our campground up here, we've got a little creek in our campground. Don't forget, where does water really come from? Well, all of the water in our uh, community is gonna be coming from the water cycle. So we may have transpiration, water coming off the plants. We may have evaporation, water moving into the air. We may have condensation, forming clouds, and then we may have precipitation as water moves back down as rain. So what happens? Here you can see runoff happening. So as we create some precipitation, we actually fill up this little stream bed and it's gonna fill up and connect and run off to fill up our lake as well. We all live in a watershed. Water pools, collects, and moves through our communities, like in this campground. Let's take a look over here at another area where water moves through the watershed. So in our industrial area, we've got a storm drain. We have storm drains all over our community. Sometimes they're covered with big manhole covers. See if you can find one in your neighborhood. Our storm drain here, we're gonna simulate a big rainfall. Remember on hard surfaces like maybe a paved area of a parking lot or sidewalks, rainwater is gonna move faster to collect and then it all goes down to our storm drains. Our storm drains may go to our water treatment plants in the community and this one actually comes right out down here, straight into the river. I wonder what would happen if any pollution got into that storm drain. Let's go back onto the other side and check that out. As we cruise back around the watershed, we're gonna see how all of our water here is dripping right down into the ocean of Lisdola. So we've got a big catch tank here for all of that river runoff making its way here. And then we've also got our wetlands. So we'll explore a little later what happens in the wetland. Coming back around through our community, we've got our housing neighborhoods, we've got downtown, and this is a great feature right here. This was our aquifer recharge zone. Let's explore what happens when water doesn't run off, but instead soaks in. So an aquifer recharge zone is a special area where water can percolate or drip through layers of rock underground. So everything we've seen so far on our model, through our river, through precipitation in our creeks and our lake, all of that is surface water. But our aquifers are sources of underground water. Let me show you how you can think of an aquifer. So as all of our water drips down or percolates through layers of rock, what we're actually doing is filling up our water table. So this is a simulation of what it would look like underground. It's not really a lake underground, right? It's layers of rock that are permeable that can hold water. So our model here is showing as it soaks up the water, it's really going underground. Let's take a look under the watershed you might actually be seeing some dripping effects happening as things are percolating and water is percolating through the watershed. 
So water can move on the surface, water can move underground, but what do we have to be water wise about keeping out? You guessed it, pollution. So let's model what happens if pollution gets into our storm drains. One of our storm drains that we're gonna check out is in our downtown neighborhood. So we've got our simulated polluted water. We're gonna add that to our storm drain here. And we're gonna see what happens in just a little bit to the water that we're collecting at the ocean level. Remember that water is gonna have to go somewhere. So as we follow the river down to the ocean, what do you think is happening to that pollution? Well, let's get down here back to the ocean and check it out. So I've collected all of the dripping water and up here it doesn't look too bad, right? It looks pretty clean. But if we get a really good close up shot, we can see that all of that pollution is really collected lower down into lower elevations all the way down to the oceans. So that pollution doesn't just disappear, even if it goes into a storm drain. If it's not going to a water treatment plant, we've got troubles. But what about our wetlands? Well, our wetlands do a great job of filtering out that pollution. So you can really see a difference. Those wetland plants have a lot of adaptations to help naturally clean up our watersheds. Wetlands are a great way to preserve our water and our environment. So as you can see, water plays a big role in our community, our landscape, and how we live. Be water wise, take care of our watersheds.